So sometimes for certain things to happen in your life, certain things have to die to live again. And that was the greatest lesson that I learned through when I lost over 150,000 pounds in my business. Wow, that, uh, that's pretty impressive um, that you have, you're still able to have that kind of faith um, despite the kind of loss that you lost of 150,000 pounds. And, you know, just to kind of like go more into detail, you know, you explain the different emotions that you was going through during that time, you know, anxiety, depression, you know, giving up on life. And, you know, someone could be listening to this um, interview right now and, you know, they be in the same position that you were in 2015. What would you say to that person, you know, uh, especially a person who's been trying and keep on failing? What would you say to that person? One of the things I like to say to anyone who's listening right now, when, you know, growing up, you know, from the age of 16 and as I began to hustle and sell things, right, apart from drugs again, okay, just for the viewers, <laughs> You know, because when you use the word hustle, a lot of people always think it's drugs, it's something. Does that make sense? So I'm just trying to clarify yeah. that. So whilst I hustled and did all these different kind of sales and stuff like that to try and make my life better, you know, one thing I was not told as an entrepreneur is that, you know, life will beat you up and down before you can ascertain some level of success. You know, we live in a world where most of us just get into business for the sake of getting into business, thinking that when you become an entrepreneur, life is going to be better. But the fact is, once you began your journey as an entrepreneur, life is going to knock you up and down. Every single reason to quit is going to be in front of you. Now, take Elon Musk, for example. Elon Musk launched over four or five, you know, rockets, you know, you know to, to, to the sky before the fifth one became a success. But people don't see that. PayPal yeah. attempted to fail a couple of times before it was sold successfully. And all these different successful, you know, business owners who are out there, they failed so many times, but because they have not shared their story quite enough, as they grew through this process, when we look at it, aspiring, you know, people who are aspiring entrepreneurs look at the glossy things we say, oh, they've made it. I want to be them. But if they tell you what they've been through, the amount of time they wanted to quit, you will never believe it. You know, and what changed for me is I started to look at the stories of all the successful people. Look at Donald Trump, for example. Donald Trump, if he became one of the most successful real estate business entrepreneurs, he, there were so many times he filed for bankruptcy or there were so many times his business tried to fail. All the greatest world business leaders out there, Grant Cardone, one of my mentors, you know, he, in 2008 to 2009 recession, he was almost wiped out completely. So apart, you know, entrepreneurs need to start looking at, you know, how many times that we, you know, all these great success innovators out there try to fail you know, before they actually became a success. Now, failure is not, you know, something that entrepreneurs shouldn't be proud of because failing to win again is great. But when you are on this journey, the moment you quit, that's when you actually fail. But as long as you fail and you don't fail backward and you fail forward, that is what actually brings out the true meaning of entrepreneurship in you. So my word is, when life knocks you down, as Les Brown will say, try to land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. It's not how many times you fall as an entrepreneur, it's that how many times you come back, all right? And not, you know, listening to what the naysayers are going to say. And that's what makes you a true success. And that's what will make tomorrow people who hear your story will be inspired knowing that you did not just become something overnight. No, nah, nah, that's very inspirational. And I'm glad that you mentioned, uh, you know, Elon Musk. Um, oftentimes, you know, when you look at people of that status, you know, Donald Trump, people never look to do research and figure out, you know, the challenges that they went through, you know, understand like the, the amount of money they lost, you know. Um, and I want to kind of go back to something that you said earlier in the interview. You said that, you know, when you was um, from the 16, from age 16 to when you lost that, um, $150,000 pound of $150,000 um, of money that you was chasing entrepreneurship, you know, and you was like, you was chasing, I guess, and I don't know if it's safe to say, you know, money, like just to have that, have that, um, that material wealth. 
And oftentimes you can see that the same thing happens today. People are just chasing to become entrepreneurs because of the idea of what entrepreneurship can be. Um, would you say is still a good thing for people to chase um, entrepreneurship? You know, you're still an entrepreneur yourself. You know, what should people chase if not entrepreneurship? That's really the better question. Phoenix, in order for you to say to yourself, you want to become an entrepreneur, I think you've got to be prepared. One thing I did not understand was the importance of mentorship. Mentorship changed my life today. So all these whiles I've been trying to do business, I didn't have mentors. I did not invest in myself because, you know, I just didn't know you have to invest in yourself to get on the mm -hmm. people who are doing great things to help you, you know, get to your goals. So what changed for me in 2017, uh, you know, was that in 2016, I started to learn about what I want to become, especially, for example, real estate. So when I got the revelation to get started in real estate, for the first time, this is where God changed my life. So every single thing that I've ever done, I've never found someone who was doing it to say, okay, Dr. Daniel, get it done like this. Dr. Daniel, you know, this is what you need to do next. This is what you need to do next. I never really even saw someone that I can watch on YouTube. I never even saw someone that I can listen to his podcast day in, day out and apply his processes and how to run a business into my business, into my processes. So mentorship is what changed for me. So what I will say to a lot of individuals who are looking to become an entrepreneur, don't try to get so many mentors because you become a public liability. You want to narrow down and become laser focused, right? So if you want to probably find yourself two or three tops, two or three people that could initially kind of help you recondition and rewire your mindset. Once these three people has helped you out, you want to pick one out of the three and then follow that one's processes. So when I wanted to start in my property journey now in 2016, I went to, you know, you know, the first seminar, the second and the third, and I picked the best out of them to mentor me. Then when I wanted to transition at any given point, you know, in my business, I always find, again, I went to three people, then I picked one and I went with their process. So when I started to do this now, I started to see how my business turned around. I started to really see that I am an entrepreneur or I am someone who was going to get there. But a lot of entrepreneurs wake up not investing in themselves and not learning through other people who are already doing it and just dive into it. And that's, you know, one of the things that went wrong over and over and over and over in the previous years as I struggled through, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, becoming a business person, because I just thought, okay, yeah, oh, the guys, this guy selling shoes, I'm going to go and buy shoes to sell. This guy selling TVs, I'm going to go and buy TVs and sell as well. This guy selling petroleum products, I'm going to go and buy petroleum products to sell. But what changed for me now is that I wanted to do property. I found someone who was doing property and I followed their process for at least a minimum of six to 12 months. And I've never looked back and my business has continued to grow, continued to scale. So if you are thinking of going into entrepreneurship right now, first thing first, one thing is life will beat you up and down, okay? There will be days you don't want to get out of your bed because you have to be creative. Entrepreneurs are creatives, all right? Entrepreneurs are generators. So they generate income. So they create an idea and the idea generates an income, all right? So if you can't do these two things, then entrepreneurship is not for you. Can you mm. develop it? Definitely, yes, you can develop it. So, and, you know, and it, that's just how, you know, people should look at it, all right? You have to be creative. You have to understand entrepreneurship is not instant success. Forget about all the glow, all the glossy things you see on social media and Instagram. All right. Forget about all of that. All of that will come once you get it right. But obviously we live in the new era where everything is instant gratification. Nobody really wants to work, but everybody wants to enjoy life, which is, which, which, which kind of conflicts the true meaning of entrepreneurship.